Hey guys, Will Terry here, and today's video is called Take My Bad Illustration Advice. Uh, before I get going on the, the topic there, I just want to make a few announcements or just a few little things. Uh, I get a lot of messages sometimes on YouTube, and I just don't have time to respond to those, so I'm responding to messages via email. Uh, will at willterry.com and also um, Facebook. You can friend me on Facebook. I'm just I use my personal account, Will Terry. Uh, okay, so don't work for clients unless they pay you industry standard prices. Don't don't let them take advantage of you. Okay, now I'm going to give you my honest reasons. I'm well established and can afford to say no to clients who pay substandard fees. If you accept low paying assignments, prices will continue to fall for me too. There are too many illustrators as it is. If you say no to paying clients, you might not get enough work and have to quit altogether. <laughs> I'm reading this obviously, and have to quit altogether, leaving more assignments for me. I, I, I never went to acting school. Clients should pay fair wages and only hire the best instead of bargain shopping. I'm mad that I got taken advantage of in the past and I'm projecting my feelings through you. I'm just looking out for you, for me, so that you don't run into your own industry, so you don't ruin your own industry for me. Okay, so obviously I have an attitude about this, but I hear a lot of people giving, and it's well-meaning advice, and, and in, in the long run, should, should anybody ever be taken advantage of or is being taken advantage of a good thing? No. But, um, I don't know you. I don't know what your situation is. How can I give you advice on whether or not you should take uh, an assignment because it's too low paying or someone's trying to take advantage of you? Um, there are a lot of scenarios, and I, I, I have talked about these in some of my other videos. I could point to probably, oh, a couple of dozen assignments that I did early on in my career where I got paid 50 bucks, 100 bucks, um, 300 bucks. In fact, I, I, um, I talked to one of my students this week about this very thing, and what he was saying is, um, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I have a client who's only paying me and I think it was three, it was $250. And he does these oil paintings and they're massive. And he does these, these fantasy oil paintings and they take him weeks to do. And he's like, it's just not enough money. And you know what? I said, you're right. It's not for the amount of work you're doing. But, um, you know, you have to decide, is that something that's going to help you further your career? Um, you're not doing it for the money at that point. You're doing it for you. You're at that point if you feel like you want an assignment um, that I think there's a lot of benefits to it okay and for the people out there who are giving advice saying don't get taken advantage of I apologize also if I'm if I'm making a gross generalization that you should you should never get taken advantage of because they're they're right there, there are a lot of uh, negatives and downsides to it but uh, anytime someone gives a blanket opinion I have a problem with it because there's so many variables and there's so many different circumstances Anyway, so this this uh, this illustration student, you know, I said, the problem is, if you do an assignment, if you give someone a two hundred fifty dollar job because they're paying two hundred fifty dollars, and you're like, well, you know, you get, I'm going to make at least ten dollars an hour, so you only get twenty five hours, or I need to get paid twenty or thirty dollars an hour, so you're only going to get ten dollars an hour, uh, ten hours. The problem with that is that the three thousand dollar client is going to judge you if they see that work and they're going to think well they're capable of this lower end stuff so I don't want to hire them um, and it's a it's basically it's a losers game to play that you have to you have to treat every piece of art that's going to go out there into the world um, as a three thousand or a five thousand dollar painting no matter what you're getting paid because that's what everyone's going to basically judge you against so I think the alternative the al the alternative is do you do a portfolio piece for yourself if you just can't stand to let someone else use your painting for two hundred fifty dollars. Um, but if you feel like the assignment itself and working with an art director and getting that experience is going to help you, um, then it's worth it, um, in my opinion. And it they they definitely were for me. Uh, the the assignments that I took 
uh, gave me so much experience uh, that I couldn't, I wouldn't trade that. Um, and the way that I, I, and I did a lot of, I did, played that game a lot early on where I actually did do, um, so I'm speaking from experience, I did do the 200, you know, you get the $250 job or you get the three thousand dollar job and it did hurt me it hurt my career early on a lot um and so i you know just kind of speaking from that experience um but i think that in order to for someone to say for someone to put that kind of weight on your shoulders to say you shouldn't do this or you shouldn't do that um that's that's a lot of weight for you to carry i mean if you think about how big the world is and how big the illustration industry is to think that your choice to take a job or not will affect prices for me or prices for you um, is really kind of naive um, the, the what's gonna happen in the market is gonna happen um, and I, I'll give you another example um, of why I think that um, it's not about you turning down this job. I think in general, it would be neat if everybody said no to low paying jobs, then prices would stay where they are. They would stop falling. They've been falling, um, but they would go up if everybody said no at, at once. But that's not that's that's not realistic. That's never going to happen. And let me tell you why. So in the early 90s, I was part of a, a, what they call the stock illustration movement where you know, you've heard of stock photography where people put their pictures in a catalog and now it's on websites and clients can use a photo for a brochure or for a magazine or whatever <clears throat> um, and uh, so in the early 90s all of a sudden the first stock illustration uh, catalog came out and everybody wanted to put their illustrations in there not everybody but a lot of people did and I was one of them and for the first few years um, maybe, maybe into the third year I was making really good money in this from the stock illustration catalog. I was making about twenty to thirty thousand dollars a year just from a few pages in that in that book. And in fact, I had one image. Um, of, it was a corporate image of some people walking across the hand bridge, these hands shaking hands. And that image alone, when I looked through my um, my check stubs, had earned to date. Um, back then it was over thirty thousand dollars for that one image and it had been resold about 15 times I want to say um, and then we started to notice that a bad thing was happening that clients were starting to go well um, the stock catalogs are selling illustrations so cheaply that it doesn't really make sense for us to pay full price for a commission piece so we'll just get stock illustration and there were so many stock images each year coming out and they stay in there so the so the pile just keeps stacking up so clients basically a lot of them started to just go for nothing but stock and it's really kind of what was a big influence in killing the editorial markets for uh, but then the internet kind of finished that off um, and so anyway but there was this movement uh, to to take back the the stock illustration and so there was a group of us and I was one of them who basically became crusaders and who said uh, hey you know what we're gonna do we're gonna um, we're not gonna put our work in the stock catalogs we're gonna take it back if we do sell stock we're gonna sell it ourselves and we're gonna sell it for the same price as what we would or even more uh, because it, it, it's a it's a premium item because it, it comes to you it comes to the client overnight instead of them having to wait they know exactly what they're getting and and so on so that we would sell it on our own basically and there was a lot of people that did that in fact that's the birth was the birth of the first icon conference down in Santa Fe it wasn't called icon then but that it's later became that um, and uh, so anyway I was part of that whole thing and uh, there were some big industry um, illustrators who were were uh, took part in that and were a huge influence in that and I my hat goes off to them because they risked they risked so much, and they spent so much time and effort um, uh, trying to trying to basically take back and preserve the industry that uh, you know was a viable industry until um, the, we saw the influence of stock. Because and I had checks for seven dollars for for an illustration, um, and that was fifty percent. So they sold my illustration to somebody for fourteen dollars. You know, um, the lowest that commission that I had ever done was about well, it was a hundred or fifty dollars, but but average commissions at that time for people that were working the field 
um, and myself included, were about you know three or four hundred dollars for an illustration. They're selling it for fourteen dollars. Um, so we we had this movement, and we we all met in Santa Fe, and it was a big powwow. We said, let's take back this industry. Um, we can control this. And what we didn't realize is that the cat was out of the bag. And I had other friends, uh, one of my great mentors, uh, who uh, who stayed in there and who stayed in the, the catalog and kept selling his work. And he was making, at the time, he was making about $300,000 a year from his uh, royalty checks from his stock uh, illustration catalogs. He was one of the big hitters in there. and uh, But he had, he probably had maybe in each catalog would have about 10 pages worth of, of images. And in fact, a lot of those guys started just, they were making so much money through the stock catalogs that they started making images for the stock catalog so basically thinking you know like what would somebody want what would a dentist want for for dental magazines or what would a lawyer want for lawyer magazines or for business magazines and just creating images of that they thought well th these these will be concepts that people will want uh, to use an illustration for and it worked and they made tons of money um, the thing that I realized what what ended up happening is Stock illustration never stopped growing. It kept going. So we were we we had this huge movement. We had tons of illustrators. There was a partnership formed by these guys called the IPA Illustrators Partnership, um, and uh, and it was an organization to basically uh, educate students coming out of school and to basically say you know um, we're we're going to ruin the industry if we if we participate in this stock, which was absolutely true. I, I agree with everything that was said. I agree with everything that was done. The problem is, uh, I think it was like trying to put our finger in the dike and trying to hold back the water. Um, if a dam is breaking, you or you or I or even a bunch of people really aren't going to be able to just stop it. Um, it's it's going to break, and that's kind of what happened with 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 um, the stock illustration, and that's what I see happening with illustration prices. And another example of that would be. You know what? What would happen if you, if you um, typed, if you went on your Facebook account and you said, "I love Walmart," and you just type that in there. You know how much love would you get, or how much hate would you get for that? How much ridicule, ridicule would you get? So, my point being that nobody likes Walmart. No one will admit that they like Walmart, or most people won't. Um, Walmart has a, a crappy name. You know, it's not synonymous with quality. Um, you hear negative things all the time. People hate Walmart. Um, it's just a, it's just a, it's just a thing. You're supposed to hate Walmart, right? Everybody ends up there eventually, but you're supposed to hate Walmart. Um, but go and drive by a Walmart parking lot and see how full it is, right? Um, Walmart's growing uh, amongst all the negativity. So we never had a chance at at stopping that stock illustration. Um, I think what what I learned from that is that market forces are more powerful than anything that you or I want. Our, our wants, it doesn't matter. What's going to happen is what people perceive is good for them. And so for you, going back to, to um, illustration prices and should you let someone take advantage of you, should you allow someone to pay you substandard prices, should you allow someone to offer you less than the going rate or whatever that is um, and or should you listen to someone like me or someone else to tell you that hey it's gonna be good for all of us if you don't if you say no to these guys so that so they get the message you know so the price is raised what's gonna happen is you're gonna say no and they're gonna ask someone else and someone's gonna finally say yes and that's the way it is um, so but the good news is that there are tears okay so I'm busy with the kind of work that I want and I'm turning down work. I just turned down four books this year. Um, and that's because I, I'm, I have these other projects that I'm working on with the uh, svslearn.com um, and um, the Xbox game that I'm working on and a few other things. But, um, but I have client work and when I, when, I, when I want the client work, it's there, but it's at a higher end. I've, you know, I've been working for 22 years and I've earned that. And, you know, my, I don't have to, you know, it's easy for me to say no, and I don't even get asked by the, the, the lower level clients. Um, they're, 
they're down there swimming around trying to find somebody who will say yes and they typically don't ask people that are up higher there are people that are a lot higher than I am um, who are getting offers uh, for for client work that pays a lot better than what I get um, so there's tiers all along the way um, and I think that's that's basically um, the way the market works uh, if, on our SVS learn by the way we we, we uh, had a video demo done by Therese Larson um, she has more client work than she can handle and from advertising clients and it's high paying stuff um, she's busy all the time uh, but if you look at her work uh, it's if you go to sillybeastillustration.com uh, and 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 check out her work you'll see why you know the, the better your portfolio is um, the, the higher end client you'll attract and uh, the more money that you'll you'll be offered so in the end I think it all shakes out I think it all works out I think that you need to make sure that you're piloting your own ship that you know why you're taking on an assignment I think it's also good to be taken advantage of so that you know the difference of them not being taken advantage of I think uh, for me I have to learn just the way I am I have to learn the hard way on most things um, I have to touch the fire so um, for me uh, I've been on plenty of bad jobs that have helped me solidify my opinions on what questions to ask to avoid clients that are going to get me into trouble with all kinds of uh, negative things and I think I've talked about that on other videos scope creep would be one of them you know where someone is stringing you along and basically um, you know you can call it being taken advantage of but the, the term I like is scope creep where uh, you know they ask you to paint a fire hydrant or a dog or whatever and you paint it and they say oh but we really wanted some flowers and the grass in the background okay so you paint that and they're like oh but it would be neat if you had you know a sky with clouds back there so they never gave you the description to where you could satisfy the assignment the first time around um, and then they keep adding things and that's that's the telltale sign of a really low client who doesn't understand who doesn't have ethics who doesn't have morals who doesn't understand how the industry works who's not thinking it through but it also goes back on to you because uh, when you get the experience of working for someone like that and you get burned a little bit then what do you think you'll do the next time what you'll do is you'll ask the next client I need a really detailed description and I say oh we just want you to paint a fire hydrant no 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 I want you to write it in the email the description of the illustration that you want and everything in there so you get it in writing right and the reason you get it in writing is so that you can go back and you can say well you said right here that this is what you want now you want extra so I'm going to charge you more for that and you can do that um, and that's that's only fair if someone isn't willing to pay for something like that they really are a bad bad client and they really are looking to take advantage of you um, and what they're going to do is they're going to um, basically rely on the fact that if you say no they'll just go to the next person you know there's plenty of people out there that's going to say yes um, so the best defense against that is to learn and grow and grow your portfolio so that you don't have to deal with the bottom rung as much and you can you can work your way out of that um, so anyway I hope this information has helped and I hope it will help you make good choices in the future and don't don't listen to other people make the decision for yourself what's good for you don't think that you can that you can take on the responsibility of the industry on your shoulders you can't what's gonna happen is gonna happen um, do what's good for you and uh, thanks for watching